God for this opportunity. Mm-hmm. We thank God for this opportunity to be here to worship and celebrate on this occasion our Monroe District 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. And we've had a wonderful time. I'm thankful for the fact that the sessions are recorded and that elders going back and having them posted so we can have the opportunity to join them, even if we're not online. I'm asking that you'll share with your friends and family uh, so that they may have this experience. Our call to worship as we prepare our hearts and our minds to go into worship reads as follows. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured to all generations. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And we all say, Amen. We'll have our prayer at this time by Sister Bush. I'm Mrs. Bush. Let us bow our heads, please. Father in heaven, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come thanking the O Lord for this day. And as we come to worship and praise the Lord, we pray, O Heavenly Father, that you would give us grace, mercy, understanding, dear Master. We come thanking thee for allowing us to be on this prayer line, giving praise and thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for all the wonderful things that you've done for us. We pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you just let us revive ourselves these 21 days, oh, God that we can be revised and go out and do the things that be pleasing in your sight, O Heavenly Father. We don't want to be contrary to your ways, O Lord. We just want to be able to praise and thank you for every good and perfect gift that you have given to us. Looking how much on all those who are sick and afflicted, oh, Heavenly Father. And when we have done the things that have been assigned to our hands, when we can't do any more, oh God, we just pray that you would just give us a place somewhere where we can praise your name forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Ms. Bush, for that powerful prayer. We'll have our scripture reading by Sister Dorothy Boatner, followed by the introduction of the speaker by Reverend Brenda M. Davis. We'll have a solo after that by Sister Shirley Fuller, and followed by the sermon, Reverend Gregory Hudson, invitation to prayer, and then remarks by Reverend Brenda Davis, Elder Earl J. Griffin, and benediction will be rendered by Reverend Gregory Hudson. And we'll have our scripture reading at this time by Sister Boatner. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Mrs. Boatner, star six, please. Unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Hey, Amen. We can hear you. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, starting at the 14th verse. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there, were, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them were in the synagogue, were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Amen. Amen. It is a joy and a blessing to be with you tonight. It is a privilege as well as an honor. And we give God thanks that one of our own conference officers would visit us and bring a word, even at such a time as this. The chair of evangelism and social concerns from the Louisiana Regional Conference. This is our preacher tonight. Well, I could give you a list, but we don't have time. I want to say to you and thank him for coming because when I say social concerns, when we see the situation at the Capitol yesterday, we have the right person for such a time as now to come before us. We have the proud pastor of the St. Luke CME Church, one who has been called by God, anointed and appointed and sent by God to give us the word of God on tonight. Even following this solo, the voice you will hear will be none other than Reverend Gregory Hudson. Thank you, Reverend Hudson. And I say to you, preach the word. God bless you. Preach. Reverend Davis, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Amen. We come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. He's never found me yet. Oh. We've come this far by faith. Kneeling on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, can't tell Come this far as I say, don't be discouraged when.
trouble in your life. He'll bear your burdens and move all misery and strife. That's why we've come this far by faith. Lean on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. He's never failed me yet. Oh, and turn around. We come this far by faith. That he didn't believe in God's word. But I can truly say, my God has made a way. And he's never failed me yet. Thank God we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word, he never failed me yet. Oh, can turn around, we come this far by faith. Oh, can turn around, we come this far. Man, outstanding. Thank you very much there. Um, everyone able to hear me there? Uh, Elder yes. Green, everybody hear me pretty good over there, Elder? Yes, sir. You're sounding okay, good. Said, okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Listen, I am um, um, I am in my classroom. Uh, we had open house tonight, and I had to sneak away uh, from my duty post, uh, Elder, uh, so I could do this preaching. So. Uh, I may not be able to preach uh, as loud and as hard as I usually would because I don't want them to catch me. You know, they used to could catch when they caught black folk doing too much preaching. Something might happen. You know what I mean. They might. Yeah, they might be <laughs> senator. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, thank you so much, um, uh, Sister Davis, for, uh, for sharing uh, and inviting me to be a part of this uh, worship experience. I've looked through the list and I see some people uh, from the Shreveport District uh, that I invited and some members, of course, of the family and, of course, the St. Luke Church and other people. And I want to thank all of you for coming and participating uh, tonight uh, and sharing uh, as well. So thank you so very much. And I want to commend you, Elder Griffin, for, um, uh, for this idea and for this concept. And uh, thank you so very, very kindly. Listen, I want to share a word with you tonight. The scripture's already been read from Luke chapter four. I'll talk about that in just a second, but I just want to share with us. Uh, and it says he has, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and uh, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I, I just want to talk about for a few minutes tonight, Elder, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Amen. Okay. The spirit of the Lord is upon uh, us. Uh, Luke chapter four is a, uh, a great prophetic text. Of course, it is rooted in uh, Isaiah chapter 61. Uh, and it is, a, I believe, the heart of the gospel message. All right. Uh, Charles Dickens would say that we live in what is the best of times and the worst of times. That's right. He suggested it is the age of wisdom and the age of foolishness, the epoch of belief, but also the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light, he said, and the season of darkness at the same time. He says it was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. Yes, yes. 
it was the spring of hope and the winter of despair. You, you, you hear my principal letting us go there. Let me give me a minute. I, I don't want to mess my groove up uh, there. Amen. All right. All right, now you still. I, I didn't have time to. I didn't have time to go home and go get to get to my church or get to the house, but that's okay. Amen. The times in which we live, we have to say they are chaotic. Uh, the times in which we live, elder, are unpredictable. The times in which we live are unparalleled. We live in an age of pandemic paranoia. We live in an age of political violence and upheaval. We live in an age where the president is petty, petulant, and preposterous. We live in an age where white supremacy is rearing its head bolder and higher and louder. We live in an age where right-wing fascism in 2021 looks similar to the same brand of fascism in Germany, 1935. We, we live in an age where religious charlatans like Franklin Graham, Paula White, Kenneth Copeland, and others use their platforms of, of mis information, disinformation, propaganda of hate, and call it the gospel. I hope I didn't offend anybody, but I'm sorry for you. However, I contend that in this season of uncertainty, in this season of unparalleled anxiety and unforeseen calamity, it is as if we are living in a movie, Brother, bro, brother Petaway. It, it is as if we are living in a third world country. It is as if we have gone from a society of frivolity to now a dystopian world where nothing seems to make sense anymore. All right. The fleeting manner in which our lives have changed is overwhelming and it is confusing. I, I know that I'm not the only one who wakes up every day wishing this pandemic existence and uh, th th this political uh, anxiety was merely a dream or a scene from a chapter or a movie in a post-apocalyptic novel. Mm -hmm. However, the season we live in is real, Elder Griffin. It right. is upon us and we're looking for a light at the end of the tunnel. We are ready to be vaccinated, not only from the perils of COVID-19, but our society needs to be vaccinated from the toxicity, venomous, poisonous, diabolical, sociopathic, and pathological lies that are spewed every day from the highest forms of government. Yesterday, we all watched in amazement. We watched in fear and we watched in disgust when we watched white nationalists pretending to be patriots stormed the capital of the United States under the guise that an election had been stolen from them. You know what, Elder? I could see this happening in North Korea. Right. I could see this happening in Iran. I could see this in Zimbabwe. I could even see this in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I could even see this in France in 1791 when the during the French Revolution when the peasants stormed the Bastille. I could see See this in Northern Ireland when the IRA set off bombs in resistance against the British government. But this is not supposed to happen right here in America. You can say, man, not in the land of the free, not in the home of the brave, not will Ronald Reagan call this the shining city on a hill, but we saw it. We not only did we see it, but somebody knows we saw it coming. Is that right? That's right. We saw the madness. We saw the mayhem, we saw the pandemonium, but can I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, not only did we see it coming, but I believe God is going to also see us through it. Watch right. this. All right. You know, I'm a football right. historian, brothers of sorts, and there was a, a quarterback who played for, 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 for the New Orleans Saints, and I believe he played for the Houston Oilers at the time, and Archie Manning is regarded as one of the league's premier quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. he, he played only for losing teams. Watch this. Both of his sons, Eli and Peyton, both were Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. But Archie Manning never played on a winning team 
except once in his pro career. Watch this. But when he was asked how did he remain productive, even though he played on horrific and terrible teams, his reply was that in every season, he was determined to give his best. Somebody just missed that. I believe that even in this season, God has determined us, God has gifted us, and God has blessed us to give our very best. I believe that because the Bible says we are the light of the world. Is that right? That's I right. believe it says that we are the salt of the earth. Watch this. In fact, the Bible says we are a chosen generation, right. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him. Watch this. Who has called us out of the darkness uh -huh. into his marvelous light. Yeah. That's why I believe God has chosen us for such a time as this uh, to show forth uh, his glory. Uh, maybe God is showing us that our characters uh, are better developed uh, through adversity than mm -hmm. they are in days of calm and easiness. Somebody ought to help okay. me here. Okay. I, I okay. contend that the God who brings us two trials is the same God who has the ability to bring us through trials. I'm preaching Amen. right now. That's Amen. why we're saying through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. That's why in a time of distress, God still expects our best. Yeah. It may not be the right season, Elder, but it's the season that we are in. Right. It might not be the right time for humanity, but it's the time that we are in 2020 right. and 2021 may not be an ideal time to dream dreams and decide to take on a new vision, but I contend that it is. Yes, yes, it is. God still expects productivity. God still expects to industriousness. God get, expects uh, fertility. God still expects creativity. God still expects us uh, to be at our best, uh, that he, that the best is still yet to come. Mm. He, he expects us to understand that he is to be glorified in the midst uh, of everything that's going on. Oh. God is saying, I, I I know the stock market uh, might tank. I, I, I know they, they, they're they plotting and planning uh, to do something else. Uh, I know unemployment is still where it's not where it shouldn't be. I know that there is still more chaos to come in other yeah. cities. I know we're headed for more catastrophe, more calamity, and a louder cacophony of hate-filled loud voices. But God says, I know all of that, but I promise you that yes, he who formed you, uh -huh. he not, watch this. I have redeemed you. Uh -huh. I have called you by my name and you are mine. This is going to bless somebody. When you pass through the waters, uh -huh. I will be with you. Yeah. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Right. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned right. and the flames won't set you on fire. For I <laughs> am the Lord your God, the yeah. Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In fact, he said, I give Egypt for your ransom right. and Cush and Sheba in your stead. Watch That's this, right. Elder Egypt. Griffin. Egypt. Friedrich, Frederick Nietzsche declared that God is dead and God remains dead. And he said, we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves? Mm. How can we, the murderers of all murderers, what we have done, what was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives. Watch this. Right. Who will wipe this blood off us? What yeah. water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals, what, what sacred games on, that Reverend. we have to invent? Watch this here. Nietzsche is speaking to us, having, having, having turned away from God. But although I dare not debate the philosophical brilliance of Nietzsche, <laughs> I do not dare to challenge his study of interpretation on, of, of the universe. On, on, I just don't believe God <laughs> is 
dead. If I was in St. Luke, I'd holler right there. My faith declares that he must be alive because the Bible says, behold, he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor does he sleep. My faith declares that he is still invincible. He is yet unconquerable. He's always inextinguishable. He is eternally omnipotent, constantly omnipresent, and he is forever omniscient. Watch this. I got to leave y'all alone. Jesus surveys the temple grounds and gets to the synagogue. Watch this. He knows there is government malpractice. Mm -hmm. He understands right. there is the exploitation of the poor. He sees the political gamesmanship. Uh -huh. He sees corruption at the highest level. He sees the bribery. He even sees Griffin, the high crimes and the misdemeanors. Yeah. He, he sees the rich getting richer on the backs of the poor. He, he sees the displaced, the disenfranchised, and the dispossessed. Yeah. He sees the manipulation of the least, the last, and the left out. Yeah. Oh, my brothers and sisters, he sees the injustice of the hour. He sees Trump. He sees Pence. He sees Mnuchin. He sees Kushner. Amen. He sees the Proud Boys. He sees the Neo Confederates. He sees the Neo Nazis. He sees those who bow at the altar of Wall Street and ignore the pleas of the helpless, the voiceless, and the hopeless. He sees, and just as he sees it, he declares there has to be something greater than this. Mm -hmm. That's why he says the spirit of the spirit. Lord is upon me yeah. and he has called me to preach the gospel to the poor. The text says he returned to Galilee in the power yeah. of the spirit yeah. and news about him spread throughout the whole country. Watch this here. Somebody missed this. Before he gets to the synagogue, he had been in the wilderness with the devil. Y'all missed that. Before he got to the synagogue, before he he had the power. He had spent some time with the devil. All right. You do remember the devil tempted, tested, and tried him. But the text says he remembered, he returned from that experience in the power of the spirit. That's a word yeah. for somebody right there. Yeah. He was teaching in their synagogues. Yeah. Everybody praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And then the Bible says they brought him the scroll and he unrolled it and began to read where it said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim the captives will be released and the prisoners will be freed. But watch this. He also says he has sent me to tell those who will mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come right. and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all he who mourn in Israel, watch this. I like this scripture here. He says he will give a crown of beauty for their ashes, also oh, right. shot right there. Their joyous blessing instead of mourning in their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. I, I, Jesus quotes Isaiah because he was sent to, to let God's folk know that he had not forsaken and forgotten about them. Okay. He wanted to come to change their mourning into joy. He, he wanted to say, I'm going to trade your ashes for beauty in your life. Isaiah speaking to the hope that God gives to everybody who's lived in the ashes of, of oppression, lived in the ashes of, of abuse, lived in the ashes of, of exploitation. God gives beauty where destruction and hopelessness had once resided. Yeah, the, the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was later killed by another mad, maniacal, narcissistic man named Adolf Hitler, said, we are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice, but we ought to drive a spoke in the wheel yes, itself. Yes. You, right. remember, you remember, you remember Griffin, it. you remember in Matthew 25, he said, when I was in prison, you visited <laughs> me. When I was hungry, yes. you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me water to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick, you came to see about me. When I was a stranger, you took me in, but now, now, 
Come here, Jerry Falwell. Come here, Franklin Graham. Come here, Ralph Reed. Come here, Paula White. Come here, Rod Parsley. When I was hungry, you canceled my food stamps and my my wheels on wheels. When <laughs> I was thirsty, you put lead and coal in my water. When Come I was sick, up. you tripled my insurance rates because you said I had a pre existing condition. Come when on, I was man. wicked, you allowed me to be molested and raped and blamed me because I didn't have any clothes. When I was in prison, you wrongfully executed me because I didn't have a, a good lawyer. That's when right, I was yeah. a stranger with brown skin, you told me to go back to my you-know-what country. Yeah. I'm not asking people to pray for America, mm. but I'm asking folk to pray for us right now. Yeah. I want to close this message by saying that in this season of devilishness, I just want us to know, Elder, that the Spirit of the Lord is with us. Uh, the yeah. Spirit of the Lord was with us on the Amistad. The Spirit of the Lord was with us uh, at the slave auction block. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord was with us uh, when we worked from can't see in the morning to can't see in the evening. All right. The Spirit of the Lord was on us uh, when they hung us uh, from trees uh, and Billy Holiday had to declare there's a strange uh, fruit on the vine. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord was with us uh, when the Constitution said uh, we were three-fifths of a person. Uh, the yeah. Spirit of the Lord was upon us uh, when James Weldon Johnson declared stony the road we trod bitter the chastening rod born in days when hope unborn had that God spirit was yeah. with us in 1619 when we first showed up here in America. Oh, I hear, I can hear somebody declaring, my Lord, he calls me by the thunder. Yes, the trumpet sounds within my soul. Yeah. And I ain't got long ain't to stay long. here. I'm out of here now, Elder. You you do know that, that, that they kept us from going to the best schools. You know they kept kept us uh, from having the best job. They, they kept us uh, from becoming doctors and lawyers. They they kept us from learning uh, how to read. They kept us uh, from owning property. Uh, and yeah. that's why we've got to sing like that sister. We've come uh, this far oh, by faith. faith. Uh, yeah. We didn't make it because of money, status, or education, uh, but we made it because uh, we, 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 we had a faith uh, in God. Uh, in right. retrospect, Elder Griffin, uh, I believe they would have done better if they would have let us go to school, uh, but instead Instead, they let us go to church. Well, it might have been better if they let us make some money, but they let us go to church. It yeah. might have been better if they would have let us go to Harvard, Yale, and Dartmouth, but instead, they let us go to church. Yeah. They heard what the white masters were singing and what the white preacher was preaching, but they knew something was wrong with that. And they <laughs> made a big mistake when they let us go to church by ourselves. I'm about to shout in my classroom. We, we, we would have been put out of business. Business, uh, but he put us in something in us uh, that made uh, us stronger. Whatever yeah. they put on our forefathers uh, from Monday to Saturday was not enough to stop us, uh, but we kept on going uh, because on Sunday morning, uh, yeah, somebody animal. decided to sing, I'm so glad uh, yeah. trouble uh, don't last always. Yeah. Uh, our forefathers believed in the God uh, of the Bible. Uh, yeah. Even when they couldn't read, uh, they <laughs> interpreted it uh, to fit uh, yes, uh, their circumstances. Yeah. We learned about a God of mercy, a God of love, a God of compassion, not the God who said this is the way things always have to be, but the God of the Bible who loves his children. I'm through, y'all. But the God of the Bible who pulled Joseph out of a pit, the God of the Bible who led Israel across the Red Sea, the God of yeah. the Bible who brought down Jericho's walls. We yeah. believe in a God who was a strong tower. Yeah. So my brothers and my sisters. I'm going to leave you alone when I tell you the spirit of the Lord is still upon us. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord is still calling us to be who we are. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Amen. God bless Amen. you, my friends. Amen. 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 Reverend hey. Hudson, extend the right hand of fellowship, please. Hey, and man. then, and lead us in prayer for a prayer list that we have, and other names can be entered in the chat box at this time. Hey, Amen. Hey, hey, Thank you for that powerful hey, word. Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, 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 oh, my God. Hey, Amen. Hey, Listen. I'm going to ask, look, now, now I want to make sure that, I, and I, um, 
Of course, we certainly want to. Was, who, who's, am I supposed to do this or someone else there? That's the spirit on you. I would love for you to do it. <laughs> listen, listen very carefully. Tonight, uh, your elder has come up with, a, as I said, a wonderful idea as we talk about fasting and praying. Mm -hmm. And at this time, we invite people uh, to move to that spirit of prayer. For as I said in the message, and as you've seen on the news, this is an unprecedented season. And for that, we will certainly have to stay in constant prayer. We're going to have to be vigilant, and we're certainly going to have to pray for ourselves. I, I, I don't mean to sound unpatriotic when I declare that uh, we have prayed for America enough. We have prayed for America even when America didn't care about us. And now I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, that we must pray for one another. We must pray for our growth. We must pray for our safety, and we must even pray for our sanity. We must pray, God, that God remove fear from us and that God take away from us that 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 that, that spirit of fear. That's why Please, Jesus Lord. said the spirit of the Lord is upon us. We thank God for who he is sending, but we do understand that our hope is not in Kamala Harris. Our hope is not in Joseph Biden Jr. Our hope is in him who brought us this far and who watches over us and protects us. I want to make sure, God, that you will bless each and every person. We certainly pray for Ms. Uh, with, with, with Mabel Stewart. I see that in the chat. I see here, uh, I think that's all I see there in our, in our chat there. But we want to pray, God, for the Monroe District. We want to pray, God, for uh, the Shreveport District. We want to pray for the Louisiana region. We want to pray for the Minden District as well. We just want these preachers, God, to feel the power of your anointing. We want this elder to be renewed and be strengthened. Even please, Lord, season. please, Lord. We pray, God, for these lay people, these persons who are here, who are paying attention on a Thursday night, who come, come to listen to this word and to be blessed by your presence. Yes. In the name of the Christ, we pray and thank God. Amen. 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 Reverend Davidson. Reverend Davis, do you have any more remarks? We, we want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for joining us for this momentous occasion. I am just so excited and so thankful for the message that we've heard on today and for all of those who participated. I believe we do still have some other names that we can uh, send up in prayer at this time. If you would just call them out, we've been covered in prayer, but we would like to just call those names out, and then we'll have remarks by uh, Pastor Davis and Elder Griffin. The names that we have will be read tomorrow, oh, right? Oh, Lord. Reverend Nunn. I didn't hear you, ma'am. I didn't hear that name. Myrna Lloyd. Yes, ma'am. I have her already on the list. Yes, ma'am. Paulette Belton. Excuse me? Paulette Belton. Okay, thank you. Amen. Reverend Hudson, we just want to thank you so much for this powerful word. We thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if I was still on mute, but this is why he, this is our leader over social concerns. This is a timely message. You had everything laid out and we needed to hear this word tonight. Yes, we Lord. thank God Amen. for the way he has used you. We just rejoice. We give God glory. For what he did in you tonight. And thank you, Reverend Hudson. Thank you so much for coming. We want to thank the Dice Chapel Church family again for assisting uh, uh, Minister Holiday for uh, being our worship leader. 
And we want to thank Mrs. Bush for the prayer and the scripture from Sister Dor Dorothy Boatner. And we also want to thank Sister Shirley Fuller for that solo. My God, my God. Thank each and every one of you for what you have done. We just had a joyous time tonight. And Reverend Hudson, thank you, thank you, thank you. All our sisters and brothers from across the district, we thank you for joining us. Elder, we're in your hand. All right. Thank you, Reverend Davis. Now... We're about ready to go. Of course, Reverend Hudson, you're always welcome in the Monroe District. We appreciate you and we appreciate the anointing on your life. Amen. Yes. And uh, and you bring a crowd with you. So I know that's a blessing. Amen. Uh, and to Amen. those who are on the line, we must make way for our uh, regional lay leader to greet us. It's good to see Brother Petaway. Would you greet us, sir, for a moment? We have about five more minutes. Good evening, great people of the Monroe District, still soaring like eagles. It's wonderful to be with you this evening. It's always God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. Amen. We'll give our love to your mother as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, Reverend Manuel, do you have anything before we uh, before I finish, yes, sir. Marks, would you go ahead on? Today is Ray Day number seven. I think it was our number seven of our prayer and fasting uh, week two, I think. So, sir. Uh, Reverend uh, Lawson, tell Ray happy birthday from all of us at the Monroe District. All right. Also, let me say that I got a, a, a note text message. That's what they call them. Text message from Reverend Christopher Nelson. Uh, his grandfather passed about 6.20 this evening, and his grandmother is not taking it too well. So he asked for our prayers as well. As you know, uh, some of you know, he too is under the COVID uh, quarantine watch. Uh, one test was negative, and he had to take another test uh, because of the symptoms, and one of his children has COVID-19. So he is certainly uh, standing in need of our prayers tonight. To each of you, remember our bishop sent us a letter saying, be safe, stay out of people's way who may be enraged, and, uh, and don't do anything uh, to provoke uh, them because they're already uh, mad, and when they get mad, the only one they can take it out on are the poor, the black, you know, and the least among us. So we want to make sure that you do stay uh, safe and take your necessary precautions. As I say, don't walk in the parking lot by yourself at night. I know you want to go shop when nobody's around, but Jesus sent his disciples out two by two for a reason. Uh, they were not the most loved and neither are we. So be careful out there. Uh, take care and uh, keep your spiritual eyes open uh, for the Lord to reveal anything that you might need to pay attention to. So I thank you again for coming on tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, let me look on my list. I believe we're going to uh, have uh, Reverend Brenda Davis uh, with us for our message tomorrow. As some of you know, we have Reverend Denise Anders Modest on our prayer list for she too uh, is trying to beat this COVID. And that's why we have this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Whether we know it or not, prayer works and fasting, yes, fasting it does. works even better. <laughs> so when you combine the two, you know, you just got a warfare uh, spirit. And so when we pray against that spirit of infirmity called COVID-19, we expect God, if they get it, we expect God to heal them and to move it from them because uh, the best is yet to come. And we just don't believe God brought us this far to leave us. So with that, leave us. God, All right. each of you on the line tonight, and we look for you on tomorrow. Uh, Reverend Hudson, the final words and a benediction, please. Hey, man, thank you, Elder, and God bless you uh, as, as well. I'm, I'm looking through the names, and I see so many of the people from uh, the Shreveport District, and uh, those of you who I sent the text message to, uh, I see here, now I saw a message in here that said, uh, it said Blake Gladney 
uh, uh, say, what does it say? Amen. You preached that tonight, but Blake is 11. I think. No. If I'm thinking that, of his mama. <laughs> no, Reverend Hudson. Okay, that's you. That's you. Okay, well, thank you. Blake had my computer, so he he ended up putting his name in. Well, that's all right. Well, you said, well, that's all right. I knew it was one of y'all. We're good, Miss Bradford. Thank you so much. Uh, that's, okay. That's one of my members. That's right. I, it's, it's all right. You did all right. that. <laughs> thank you so much. See, that? I can... So I can go back to St. Luke's Sunday morning, uh, brother, uh, brother Elder. Right. All right. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. I see some. I see some more folk there. I see Miss Broussard all the way up in uh, in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I see uh, some folk from the New Hope Church. Uh, let's see. I see Miss Emery. I see some of these numbers. I believe those are some of my people. You have some of the numbers blocked out, and those are some of my people uh, as well. Uh, and thank you all so much. And again, as I said, this is the first time I think. This first time I preach from my classroom. I'm gonna set it up next time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach from a podium in here. Somebody Amen. might get saved. Amen. I don't know tell. But anyway, thank you all. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I would now that you bless me with your with your presence. Bless this elder and bless his pastors and bless the members of the Monroe District for their and for the vision that he has shared. And God, we just pray again for ourselves and ask that you would strengthen and bless us in the very name of the Christ. Dismiss us unto ourselves. Dismiss us unto a place where you are blessing us. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen. And God bless you. God bless everybody tonight. God, God bless, bless you. This is Amen. Our, our final song Amen. for the evening, as you know. You're free to listen, and you're also free uh, to go it on and start your your night. But this God is bless you, uh, him for tonight. God bless everyone. <laughs>
my song of praise for it was grace that bought my liberty I do not know why Jesus came to love me so he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs I shall for Money.